I would like to bring you news that today the Commission has adopted its set of proposals for a reformed common fisheries policy. Later this afternoon, I will present the package in detail to the European Parliament's Fisheries Committee, but uh, I know that uh, there is uh, already a lot of interest in the sector, but also in public opinion on our plans for recovery, so I will be very happy to give you the main highlights of the reform and explain the rationale behind our proposals. First, let's look at the situation we are facing right now. So, our system is not working in favor of sustainability. This is absolutely sure. 75% of EU stocks are still overfished and a third of them are in a warring state. The system does not work for the EU market either. Europe has to rely on imports for two-thirds of the fish we consume. Too many fleet segments live on low profits depend on subsidies for survival. So business as usual is not an option anymore. According to our modeling exercise, if no reform takes place, only eight stocks of our 136 will be at sustainable levels after 10 years, after a decade. In other words, if we don't make structural changes to the way we do business now, we will lose one fish stock after the other. So, what I want, I want to break this vicious circle. This is why today I am presenting, presenting a comprehensive overall of the policy. We have a package adopted in unanimity by the Commission and I'm very happy about it. And uh, this package includes a communication explaining the reform, a new basic regulation for fisheries, a new common market organization, and a communication on the international aspects of the common fisheries policy. Each of these is entirely new and equally important. But the three key concepts Three words I would like to mention here, because they are underpinning all of it, is sustainability, efficiency, and coherence. Let me give you some highlights about the sustainability first. Here we are going to bind ourselves to reach maximum sustainable yield until 2015. So this will become a legal obligation of our acts. Maximum sustainable yields, yield means that we can go keep fishing. This is what it means. But we have to manage each fish stock in such a way that we can get maximum fish production while still keeping the stock sustainable. So we are going to keep this target and to reach it until 2015. A second thing we need to do for sustainability is to stop discards, to stop wasting. Discards in some areas are 60% of catches we uh, take from the sea. So our proposal is to change the system so that all catches are landed and counted against quotas. A third element is giving an alternative to overfishing. So, aquaculture will give a very, very, very important push. So, aquaculture um, is crucial both in seawater and in fresh water for our markets and communities. This uh, activity has a potential to bring smart, inclusive, and innovative growth to both coastal and inland areas, 
and uh, it will get the prominent place it deserves in our legislation. This is about sustainability. About efficiency, two points to make. First, what uh, I would like to do is to decentralize. What we have now is a policy that uh, takes all the decisions, the most detailed decisions, at the highest level. So now we have uh, the obligation to have a co-decision process with uh, Parliament and the Council, and this means that we have to decide all together about all, all the details of the policy. To stop that, we need some decentralization. So let me give you an example for a stock, just to understand it, what we are going to do if this proposal is adopted. We are not going uh, to decide upon technical issues, for example, for the mesh size that our fishermen uh, use in uh, English Channel to cut sole. What we are going to do is to give the possibility at a sea basin level for our member states and the industry and everybody to agree between them on a plan. And if there is an agreement, we are binded to go for this plan. The Commission is going to interfere only whenever there is not an agreement at a regional, at a regional level. So I hope that this regionalization exercise will help our member states since they are going to have more competencies, more authorities, and also will help good cooperation with the industry, with the sector, with our fishermen, since they will have a very important role in taking decisions by themselves. The second point about efficiency and governance is uh, the introduction of tradable concessions. So tradable concessions have been already introduced in many countries and uh, they have proved effective in tackling overcapacity. For instance, in Denmark, the demersal fleet was slimmed down by 30% in four years and the pelagic fleet by 70%. Norway, United States, Australia, and New Zealand also show success with this approach. So we are going to introduce this approach at national level. At national uh, level only because we don't want to disturb relative stability. And we are going to propose safeguards to protect uh, legitimate public policy concerns like preventing too many fisheries interests to be concentrated in the hands of a few. And the small scale fleet will be exempt. So we would like to avoid the absorbing, absorption of this uh, small scale fleet from bigger operators. So we have uh, regionalization, result-based management, and uh, intelligent rights-based management to make us more effective. A few words about the third pillar. The third pillar is coherence. And it simply means that all other instruments for market organization to financial support must be aligned to the first two. I have two points to underline here. First, a few words about labeling. Labeling is very important because we would like to give consumers the information to uh, go for a real choice. So consumers are parts of this reform too, just like the sector and we can all play a part in making coherent choices for the future. So we'll have compulsory labeling. For example, we will, we will be obliged to inform consumers about uh, the area from which the fish come from, for example, from the Atlantic or from the Indian Ocean. About, uh, we are going to give information to the consumer if a fish product is fresh or defrosted exact uh, the name, exact uh, the way it was fished. So this uh, will be very, very important information, not only for the consumers, 
but uh, for our sector too, because as you can imagine, this will help our fisheries industry to achieve a level playing field between our fishermen and the fishermen of other countries from which we import fish. Also, we have to go for a new generation of sustainable fisheries agreements with other countries. And the idea here is uh, to persuade everybody that we can implement in other countries' waters the same rules we apply in our waters. Also, this means that we are going to cooperate with them to implement IUU regulation throughout the world in all waters as we are trying to do in our waters. So this is coherence, is the basis for a good international cooperation in order to be sure that uh, there is a level playing field between our fishermen and the fishermen of other countries where uh, fishermen fish and then export to us. So these are the general ideas of the reform. I'm happy to hear your questions.